Hello and welcome to another episode of the Synapse e-learning series. With us today we have Prof. Everaldo Attart, a prominent researcher on herbal medicine and also a Maltese representative in the Biological Medicines Committee abroad within the European Commission. Today we're going to be discussing herbal medicine, its use in contemporary management of patients, science versus tradition. Uh, thank you for accepting our invitation today, Prof. Everaldo. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Um, my first question to you, what do you understand by the word herbs in the most general sense? Herbs basically com encompass uh, not just um, herbs that we find in uh, culinary um, um, culture and in foods, but also herbs that actually uh, are used as medicines. Uh, some herbs are also um, uh, transformed into cosmetics. So the word herb is quite um, uh, wide in use. And when it comes to uh, medicines, uh, the herbs are not just um, the herbaceous plants, but also uh, um, the bark of trees, uh, seeds, roots, they are considered as herbs. And would you consider the use of herbs, at least as an obsolete or ancient method of medicine, do you think it's still relevant today? Um, uh, herbs uh, have eventually um, uh, developed our way how we actually um, uh, cure ourselves also um, uh, in the form of uh, also food and so on. So basically the uh, herb as such has evolved with time. Uh, we started off with uh, crude um, herbal medicines, uh, but of course with time there was refinement into even modern medicines. Uh, we have also to say that some of the modern medicines are actually uh, derived from these uh, medicinal products. Perhaps you've got a, uh, um, a, mo a molecule and which was actually transformed uh, into a more uh, effective agent. With, for example, with the case of uh, salicin, all right, we've got acetylsalicylic acid as the derivative of the uh, uh, extract from the uh, willow bark. Exactly, but the use of herbal medicines in their raw form do you think that since their use is increasing, in fact in the United States a study published in 2008 by the University of California shows that basically 20% of the American population make use of herbal medicine regularly and the figure seems to be increasing. Do you think that the trend towards the use of herbal medicine is showing, shows a lack of trust for Western medicine, for the conventional medicine which we see today? There is some correlation as such, but uh, what's happening also is that um, uh, people uh, in general um, uh, believe that these uh, uh, medicines, as they are green, they are safer. In fact, this is not the case with uh, all um, herbal medicines. Uh, and therefore, they uh, tend to go on to these herbal medicines as their um, uh, primary um, uh, treatment. Um, but when we are dealing with herbal medicines, we should look into the aspect whether these medicines are um, uh, standardized uh, medicines or medicines that are so plants that are uh, obtained from the wild, for example, um, uh, that uh, in that case it would be um, uh, uh, an unofficial product and may be also dangerous. And in fact, Prof. Veraldo, um, this same review concluded that the use of herbal medicines, at least in the United States, although it is increasing, it's not in fact sustainable. And it, it claims that basically it's not sustainable because it's not regulated well. Um, and it puts in doubt the safety profile of certain medications, certain herbal medicines, and uh, compared with conventional medicine. So what do you think, uh, how does this relate to the local picture here in Malta? Uh, basically, uh, this is a very grey area in the sense that um, having herbal medicines on one side and food supplements on the other side, um, uh, there is a uh, lack of knowledge uh, for some extracts and therefore um, some are being marketed as uh, food supplements and therefore this may lead to several problems. In most cases, um, uh, the products, once they are um, uh, at, the, at port health, they uh, are actually um, uh, checked for their content uh, because uh, some may be medicinal, even though in some countries these products are considered as food supplements. Then it is up to the local authorities, especially the medicines authority, uh, that decides whether the product should be allowed um, uh, as a non-medicinal, in that case, or as a medicinal. So uh, there is regulation, 
uh, and unfortunately, those products that are uh, for personal use, um, uh, they uh, tend to uh, bypass all the system and therefore uh, some patients are taking such medicines without uh, any uh, supervision. And regardless of the interactions which they may cause with the conventional medication. Exactly. And some may argue that the, the fact that conventional medicine is so successful is because we monitor it. We give it according to the age, to the gender, to the specific needs of the patient. I don't think that we can say the same for herbal medicines, especially if we speak in general. And what do you think is the way forward to make sure that we regulate it more? Because there is a difference between introducing it to the market and then making sure that it is... Actually, yes, um, one of the issues is that there should be more patient education. Uh, patients should be educated um, on the way uh, these medicines actually work, how they should be taken. And um, uh, as we said already, being green products doesn't mean that they are safe. So uh, if uh, they are require advice from um, the physician or the pharmacist, um, the patient should tell the, uh, the professional and that actually uh, they are, uh, he, is taking, he or she is taking the product. So this is a very important uh, aspect uh, where um, uh, we fail actually to combine these two together, the traditional medicines uh, and of course the uh, conventional medicine. I believe that today with this <clears throat> e-learning interview we're trying to bring forth more information about this topic because this topic unfortunately it's a grey area, there's a lot to be discussed, a lot to be researched as you well know um, because you're, the for you're in the forefront of this research as well and many medical professionals are faced with this issue day by day. Um, so if I am in contact with my patient in the clinic <clears throat> at hospital and I get to um, give information about these products, um, where should I find a reliable source of information to at least try to give the best advice to my patients? Yes, uh, actually to find information related directly to the products it's sometimes very difficult um, and therefore we rely on some sources, some reliable sources such as um, the website of the European Medicines Agency um, where you find several products, herbal medicine products um, and lists where you can uh, look into the uh, assessment report uh, for the specific uh, product but unfortunately this is not true for all products and therefore we've got limitations there uh, when a patient or a consumer comes in uh, with information on, on a new product it may be not just um, Western herbal medicine, it can be Chinese or even uh, Ayurvedic Indian herbal medicine, which we do not know a lot about these. Actually. So it is very challenging and it relies mainly on um, uh, the knowledge of the healthcare professional uh, on how to go about this issue. Uh, it's very difficult to find all this information uh, in a compendium or in a book. And it's a potential uh, aspect, a potential sector where we can grow and research more. Exactly. Uh, thank you, Prof. Sattart, for being with us here today. We truly enjoyed this discussion and we hope that through your contribution and that of your fellow colleagues, we can further increase our awareness on herbal medicine. I invite you to like our Facebook page, the Synapse, um, and to keep yourself updated by following our e-learning series. Thank you.